Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this, we're going to be reviewing the ResinWorks EasyCast 200 series. Let's get started. So I had uh, some interesting results with this resin, um, but let's talk a little bit about it beforehand. Um, so the, what ResinWorks is saying about this particular resin is that it is 20% wax content which is pretty high when it comes to castables. Um, I'm not sure what the normal amount of wax content is for like others that claim it, but 20% um, is pretty high. And they also have the 400 series after this one, which has 40%. We'll be talking about that one in a separate video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. So we were doing our testing on our SL1S 3D printer and um, great printer so far. Uh, we had some, a little bit of printing difficulty. Um, the reason why I mentioned the, the wax content is because um, the wax content just makes the prints a little bit more difficult um, in terms of, you know, the overall structure. So with the high wax content, um, we were getting quite a few failed prints. Uh, this is the model that I run for my exposure tests. It uses very minimal amount of resin and it basically just gives me a, a good place to start. If I'm not getting anything whatsoever, then I know I have to start ramping up that exposure time. Or possibly the resin just isn't designed for these filigree type models. The overall support structure of these hollow balls is about 0.2 millimeters. And you can tell just by looking at them uh, whether or not the, the support structure is well developed, which is something that we look for when it comes to the exposure. You can also cut these off and weigh them, and then they should be a very exact amount if you know the gravity of the material you're working with. Anyway, so I had uh, quite a few failures with this particular model, um, mostly because I think just how thin it was. But we started seeing successes around the eight second exposure mark. So I did 30 second base, eight second exposure for this one, and it turned out pretty good. Uh, I believe some of these failures are just kind of due to transport coming from my home where the 3D printer lives to the studio, but uh, regardless, like, turned out pretty well. Um, what I was mentioning before about how brittle it is, I've just got this section here. Let's just kind of like, let's just crush it. So let's just break this model. Let's just see what kind of uh, structure it has. Well, for tear force, doesn't take nearly anything. Now, this is a this raft is very, very thin as well, so it really shouldn't. But we do have some support material that we can play with as well. And then just overall, let's just kind of crush that up. Like, it just kind of turns into dust. It's, it's a very brittle type resin. So bear that in mind if you're intending on printing these and then shipping them to a client. You're gonna have to make sure that it's packaged pretty well. But that's not abnormal at all. We find this with virtually every castable that we've ever tried, uh, save a few that are just very brittle and that's just the way it is. You can't have everything when it comes to these castable resins. However, you probably won't be casting or making these type of hollow balls very much. So let's move on to something more substantial with our very standard uh, collection of models here that we use across all of our resin reviews so that we can make a very accurate comparison between all of the resins. So the overall quality of this print is very, very high. Like the the details that I'm seeing, like texture details in the snakes on the, uh, the scales, phenomenally well-defined. There's, everything is very smooth. Uh, every prong is accounted for. All of the holes for all the stone setting seats are flawless. Like everything just looks really, really good. Uh, I do have a tiny bit of layer shifting up here on the signet ring, but nothing too pronounced. Um, and uh, that can be due to my supports as well. Uh, on the micro pave ring, we've got a ton of perfect stone settings going. There is no warpage whatsoever. Everything's turning out perfectly round. The skull looks fabulous. And uh, just overall, the print quality is exceptionally high. Uh, I think it's gonna turn out flawlessly based off of all the R&D hours that they've put into both of these resins. Uh, one thing to note with this resin is that it does require a very significant amount of cure time. If I had to say, that's probably one of my biggest critiques of the ResinWorks 
overall lineup. Um, they did this with the uh, Resinworks Violet as well, and I'm pretty sure it kind of goes through all of their different products. Um, in my particular case, I have the CW1 uh, from Prusa as my cure wash station. They specifically say that you probably shouldn't be using a two-in-one for this because they tend to be a little bit lower powered. Uh, I think that's particularly true in the case of the Anacubic and the Elgu ones. I think the UV LEDs in their cure stations are rated for less than 45 watts, which is on the low end. Um, the CW1 by contrast is a 60 watt, I think 55, something like 56. Anyway, uh, so it's on the mid range. Uh, there are much higher powered ones and with the higher powered ones, you can get away with, I think, curing these for 10 minutes, something like that. In a 60 watt, it takes about 45 minutes. And then obviously the lower wattage you go, the longer it takes. So that is gonna be my one thing about this resin that I'm not a big fan of because there are so many others that either require nothing uh, in terms of cure time or they have a specialty, something like X1, where you actually do it chemically with alcohol, which I found incredibly convenient. If you haven't seen that review, by the way, go check that one out. The under, When you first take these models out of your printer, they are, the word I'm gonna use is soupy. <laughs> the This resin is incredibly thick, like very viscous. Think like, uh, you know, a, a lukewarm curry or a stew or something. Um, so it's very, very viscous. And uh, the the models are very floppy. In this instance, for example, like this, if I was to hold this up just after the print, it would just be like, bleh, and it would just be wobbling all over the place. As you can see here, this is one of the test prints with the uh, Series 200, and it was incredibly sticky on the build plate. Like the, the overall bed adhesion is awesome. Uh, to the point of it's almost a little bit inconvenient. Um, getting it off the bed, something that's this floppy and not structurally sound, it makes it difficult to get off the build plate. So that might just be a settings problem, but, but I did some further tests with lower exposure time on the base layers and we had instant failure. So. There's definitely a fine line here when it comes to this resin. It needs to be dialed in very accurately. So my overall take in summary of the printing with the Series 200 is you need to have your printer profile dialed in very exactly to get perfect results. They have a pretty good library of printer profiles already set up. So if you have, uh, say, an Elgu or an Asaiga or something like that, uh, definitely refer to their website because they have a very nice selection. Much, much later. This is just kind of like a mini update. Um, we pretty much finished reviewing the entire th video for the EasyCast Series 200 from Resinworks before we received our Mars 3. Um, so just for due diligence sake, I am going to be uh, doing a quick print in this. I will be right back and I will just show you the kind of results that we get with this. So if this is any testament to the sandblasted bed on the Mars 3 as being a bit of an upgrade. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely an upgrade. Uh, this is exceptionally well stuck. I am using the Resinworks Mars 2 Pro settings for the Mars 3, and I think they're a bit too much, frankly. This is not a great time trying to remove this. Thankfully, we have this raft, so not too big a deal. We're not damaging the models, but it's still kind of annoying. So even though the printing for us has been a little bit tricky, um, we do have good enough results that we are going to proceed on to the casting. So I'm going to get these all sprued up and I will see you guys in a little bit with those results.
and we're back with the casting results for the Resinworks 200 series. Um, and kind of without surprise, they turned out really, really well. Um, so let's walk through it. Uh, let's start with the skull, the heaviest one that arguably this resin isn't really designed for. The layer lines are negligible, like you couldn't really see them in the actual prints. Uh, they're very barely visible here on the surface, and I don't see any problem with the details. Everything looks really, really nice. It looks like the metal got everywhere that it needed to be. It was a really good cast on the part of the skull. Uh, let's go over to the micro pave ring. This one is probably one of the most difficult of the whole bunch of them to get done right because of all of the tiny little holes that poke through. And that is a point where if there's any thermal expansion during the burnout process in the resin, the resin then breaks them off and you get them filled in with the metal. Uh, in this case, every single one turned out perfect. Uh, let's move over to the snake earring. Um, we only had one of them turn out from printing because of all the uh, support problems that we had. Uh, but the overall is it's not bad. The, the scales are really good in terms of detail. The head, eh, it's been kind of messed up. Now, this is a heavier model, so I would actually classify this more in the 400 series category. Moving on to the signet ring. This one, again, I would classify as a fairly heavy model, particularly on the top. This one is not hollowed on the back. Uh, there is that layer shift still visible, but I mean, you put it in... You, that's what you get back, so it's not like it's magically going to disappear. There is a little bit of surface texture around the side, just one side, that's odd, just one side and again it would just be able to buff right off. All right, moving on to the vintage saddle ring, this one looks beautiful as well. Uh, again surface texture but only on one side, it's odd. Maybe it's because my kiln faces the wrong direction, some feng shui or something. Uh, all of the stone settings turned out great. Uh, everything else turned out really, really beautifully. Moving on to the more engagement ring style. All of the prongs came out perfect. The seats are perfect. Everything's perfect. It's just a beautiful cast overall. So um, there really wasn't a big surprise here. Um, Resinworks has put in so much time uh, in terms of R&D and effort to develop the 200 series and the 400 series resins. So I was really not uh, concerned that this wasn't gonna work out at all. So for the Resin Works EasyCast 200 series, in summary, the printing was pretty easy. Uh, there was a couple of failures, but that might also be related to our printer um, and exposure settings, possibly things like that. However, 200 series is prints much easier than 400, so I would strongly recommend starting with 200 series if you're in the jewelry space. Um, for typical engagement ring style rings, this resin is the perfect fit for you. Not that you can't use the 200 series for other types of, of projects. As you can see, there's quite a wide divergence here in terms of you know, model size and detail and all that stuff. Um, but when you start to get into the heavier models, then start to consider the 400 series, which we'll be talking about in a future review. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you are so you don't miss that. So that's all I have to say about this resin. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative. Strongly recommend you check out our resin ranked list where we will be listing this resin uh, in kind of direct competition with the other resins that we've tried. I believe this is number 15. 14, something like that. I can't remember the exact number, but we have tried most of them on the market. Uh, and that's dating back to more than two years ago now, I think. Anyway, check that out on our website, link in the description below. And once again, if you're not already subscribed, please do. Uh, we'd love if we could grow this channel. And if you're feeling especially generous, we do have our merch bar where we're designing t-shirts and stuff like that. Oh, not this t-shirt. I, I only have the one and it's kind of dirty right now. Uh, and we also have our membership program. If you are trying to get into this space and you need more of a one-on-one -on -one help, we have uh, a growing Discord that's coming together with people from all over the world who are needing 3D printing assistance and casting help, and we are trying to do our best to provide that help. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.